My husband and I recently bought a new construction home in Provence, which is a neighborhood close to Bee Cave, Texas. We chose Weston Homes as our builder, and so far we're very happy with our home. But in this video, I'm gonna break down some things you should know about Weston and our experience, both good and bad. So Weston Homes is a Texas-based company. They were founded in Houston in the early 1990s, and they are now spread throughout Texas. So you'll find Weston Homes in many different communities surrounding Austin. They are known for building larger size homes up in the 3000 range most often, and they also have a very elegant, impressive spiral staircase that you'll find in the majority of their floor plans. And that was one of the things that kind of drew us to the builder is we love the wow factor coming in of seeing the spiral staircase and in many cases, a big wall of windows that's overlooking the backyard. So it just gives you this big feeling of space and that wow factor with their design. Now, like most builders, some of the standard features that come in the home vary based on the community. I was a little shocked when I was back in Sweetwater when they first started building. Some of their big houses had like carpet in the dining room, carpet in the living room, things that I was a little shocked at that they weren't upgrading. Um, when we built in Provence, it was common to have the hard flooring throughout the, at least the main living area and dining area. I mean, who would put carpet in a dining room now? <laughs> Um, but we did have to upgrade our flooring in the bedrooms and the downstairs study. So, you know, if you want the hardwood floors and stuff, just be careful that you may need to upgrade more in some neighborhoods than you would in others. Also, the type of surrounding on the exterior um, can vary. So in Sweetwater, we mostly saw brick. Here in Provence, our house has stone, and I was actually so shocked that they put stone all the way across the back, which most builders will not do. So we have four sides, beautiful Texas limestone. Now, as far as the quality of the build, we feel like we got a very solid, well-built home. We did do our own private inspections, so um, the inspector really didn't find that many things wrong, and the builder were, was able to take care of a few repair issues that came up. Um, the only thing that I would say we were really disappointed with was the quality of the cleanup job at the end. When you're building a house, it's always going to be messy. I mean, you have contractors coming in there day after day, so things will always feel really dirty. When we got to be like a month or so from our finish date, we kept asking the builder, okay, will they clean up the floors at some point because there were paints you know splotches and just kind of like messy water stains from when the tile guys like cleaned up the grout and kind of smeared it with a sponge they didn't get all of the grout up so there were like water stains with grout lines that were kind of just splattered across the floor and then pl uh, paint splotches that had fallen from the ceiling so we kept asking will they clean up the floors before moving and the builder kept assuring us like absolutely they'll come in here they at one point told us, hey, it's all cleaned up. I was like, great. We went over there and I still see the paint splotches all throughout the house. And I see the grout water, dirty puddles, you know, on the floor that are dried. And so I told the builder again, like these spots are still there. One time they said, okay, we sent another cleaning crew back. So I went out to meet them because we didn't live too far away. And they were still in there just mopping with water. And so I pointed out to the cleaners, I said, you know, we need to get the paint up. And they're like, oh no, we're just cleaning. Someone else will have to do that. So we specifically asked for either a painter or someone else to come with the right tools and you know chemicals or whatever to lift that off. And it just never happened. So after move in, we did have to go down and like just clean it ourselves. We finally just gave up. It was super frustrating. We just wanted a clean house. So we got down there and just scrubbed all of the tile ourselves. Um, that was our, probably our biggest thing was just they could not clean up the house properly. And then on our patio, we had an issue with um, the concrete not being level. So someone came out from the builder and just put extra concrete on there, but did just a horrible, messy job, came out again, made it worse. Um, and so we eventually just hired someone to coat the, the patio and to kind of level it out for us. Um, 
you know, in perspective though, of getting like a beautiful home, those were two minor things that we were willing to just deal with and just get past it. I'm always, I have the attitude in real estate that nothing goes right all the time. You don't sweat the small stuff. So even though it was a little frustrating to not have a totally clean house and to have, you know, some mess on the patio, we were able to get past that and just take care of it. And that way we can enjoy our home in peace and just feel settled. Now, the good things I love about the home, um, like I said, is just the space in it. We have so much room in our house. I love the design of it. I love like the details of um, the backsplash, the cabinets, the color scheme that they picked out, I thought was really beautiful. So I have nothing else to complain about in my home. Like I was overall very happy with our build experience. And I would say the sales agent makes a huge difference. So we absolutely loved our sales agent um, Preston, who was the main person that helped us here in Provence. He was fantastic and really fought for us and just made everything go smoothly as possible. Now I had other clients that did not have a good experience in a different neighborhood. I won't post where that is now, but if you become my client, I will tell you. Um, but this was my first time writing a contract on a West End home. And I did not know that they had a couple of strange um, requirements that I'd never seen before with other builders. So one of them is that all of the paperwork has to be signed wet signature. They won't do DocuSign. There are certain um, papers that have to have a wet signature. Well, most buyers nowadays are coming from out of state or from another city. So what usually happens is they'll fly into town, they look around at a bunch of different builders, different resale homes, and then at the end they'll say, okay, let's put an offer on this. And a lot of times they fly back and leave the city again. So that's what happened with my clients. They, they, are, they looked at everything and they're like, okay, we love this home the most, let's do the offer. So I call the sales agent, they've already left town at this point, and he's like, okay, have them come in tomorrow. And I'm like, well, no, they're gone. They're not in the city anymore. And he's like, well, we have to have them like physically sign the documents. So we ended up mailing the documents to them, FedEx. They signed everything. We also found out that they would not take a wire for their earnest deposit. It has to be a cashier's check, which is a little old school nowadays, now that everything is you know, pretty much digital. Um, but they did it. They sent in their money, they sent in their paperwork, got it. Well, the third thing that we did not know is that they only accept offers on Monday. And so the sales agent was like, well, it's Tuesday or whatever date we had just missed the cutoff, which we were not aware of. So we had to wait until Monday the next week. Well, in the meantime, that agent collected some offers from other clients as well. So he wrote up contracts, also collected the earnest money check from those um, clients as well. And then, you know, told our, told my clients on Monday, Hey, just so you know, we have now several offers on this home. So it was just a really frustrating experience for them. They were not happy about that. Um, and you know, we just felt like it could have been told to us up front what the process is like. We did get them under contract on a different home because that did not work out still, you know, they're very happy with it. They ended up actually liking the other home a little better and it was still a Weston home, but it was just a kind of an eye opening learning curve for me since that was the first time I had sold one. So now I warn my clients like, just so you know, Weston has some different policies. Okay. You need to come with a cashier's check or be prepared to FedEx one. You need to, you know, be there in person to sign and also let them know about that Monday deadline. You know, at some point that could change. This is now like March of 2024. So if you're watching this video in the future, things could change, but that's been the experience so far. We were prepared for that when we purchased our home. And so we knew like, okay, we got to sign, we got to get the cashier's check and it helped that we live not too far away. So those are just some things to know as you're going into making an offer on a Weston home, just kind of understand their policy. Also talk to the sales agent and ask them if we give you our check and we sign a contract, are you going to keep showing the home and keep collecting, you know, other contracts or are you holding it for us? That was kind of my experience with all the other builders right now is that once you put your money down and you sign the contract, they consider it like it's yours. They're just holding it and waiting for management to sign. 
So it was really kind of shocking for us to see that they were still writing offers in this different community. And um, this was recently, this was not, you know, like during the crazy bidding wars of 2021. So that just shows you the difference a sales agent can make, the difference between communities. It's not always reflective of the builder across, you know, the whole city. So our experience was really good. We loved our sales agent and just had an overall great time. So would I recommend Weston to other clients? Absolutely. Uh, we've brought several other clients out here to show them Weston Homes in this neighborhood. We've shown it in other neighborhoods. I've sold Weston Homes before. So it's a beautiful product and I definitely do recommend them if you're looking for a good value. They're one of the probably the best quality builders that's still at a reasonable price point um, compared to some of the other big builders like Drees or so on. They're gonna be a little more pricey and considered more luxury. But if you're looking for a great space, like a good size home that has a lot of wow factors in it, then I think Weston is a great option. Now, a couple warnings again, before you buy any new construction home, it does not matter what the builder is, always get third party inspections done because even though a house is brand new and they've gone through their own inspections for electrical and so on, there's always gonna be little mistakes. So why not get an inspection now, get them to fix it before you move in instead of having to deal with warranty issues. Stay on top of them for cleaning. Um, if we had more time, we could have delayed our closing and said, hey, we're gonna wait a week and let you really get in here and clean it up. But we were on a time crunch. We had to move in out of our old house on a certain date. So we just were like, forget it, we'll move in. Um, and we eventually just cleaned it ourselves. But if you have more time, I could have pressed to have my house cleaned. So just you know, keep those couple things in mind. And as always, if you're thinking about building new, always ask us for advice. We can help you negotiate and get the best deals possible and kind of guide you through the process no matter which builder you choose because all of them are a little bit different. But at the end, getting a beautiful new home is absolutely worth it.